the floor. Thank you so much, guys. Not Hi, everyone. Um, welcome to the second part of the um, supervision webinar for EYES. Um, we're very excited to have you um, back and looking forward to sharing, sharing some new interesting things and kind of looking back on some of the things we talked about when we um, were with you two weeks ago. So I'm going to just quickly review the agenda for our session today. So first of all, we're going to do some introductions. We're going to try something a little bit different. Stephanie will do that with you all. And we'll see how that goes in terms of um, getting to know each other and further becoming a, a community that knows, uh, knows who's who. Um, then we want to reflect back on some of the conversation we had um, the last time we were together and we want to review the, the conversation about leadership styles and about supervision and we want to really intentionally bring those together and have you take a moment to kind of think about how those two things fit together for yourselves. Um, then we're going to have some time to do some reflections from the field. We're going to see, have some conversation for anyone who was able to set a goal and try something new to kind of talk about that. And for those of you who weren't able to do that, to think with your colleagues about a goal that you might have. And so this is really a chance for you guys to, to talk with each other um, using the, um, the the fashionable way of typing your uh, communications, which we're all getting better at in this day and age. And then finally, we're going to spend a good chunk of time beginning to build your toolkit, your supervision, what we're calling your toolbox of supervision strategies. And some of the tools, I want to just highlight that some of these tools will be things that you'll be able to have in hand and others are just tools or things that you can just draw from to do to help support your supervision. So I'm going to pass um, the ball to Stephanie, although I can't see, Tina, I might need your help trying to find the list of names because I don't see where the ball is. Oh, it was passed to me. Oh, somebody did it for Regina you. Okay, it, yeah. thank goodness. <laughs> oh, here it is. Let's see. Okay, apologies. So Stephanie will um, will continue on with the uh, our activity. Yeah. Hi everyone. Um, it's so nice to be back. Um, for those of you who joined us in session one, and for those of you who are here with us for the first time, we're thrilled that you could join us. So, um, as Sam mentioned, we're changing things a little bit today with the introductions because this is all a learning process. So fully embodying the concept of parallel process that we learned, some of the time lags of the polls, et cetera. So we're going to try to use more of the Q&A box today and see how that goes. And so um, when, in order to start building this community and learning from each other about what we're looking for in supervision and what that means for how we can continue to be intentional about what we want to do in our own supervision within our agencies, um, what we would love for you to do is to use the Q&A box that you have and to share your name and the state that you're coming from, and then three words to describe your best supervisor. So um, are there three attributes that you think of or you know, a very short three-word sentence, that's a challenge, um, but something to, to really articulate what it is when you think about really good supervision that has stuck out to you. So name, state, and three words to describe your best supervisor. And then we'll share those responses back. I'll even participate too. All right, we have New Hampshire with us today. Great, New Hampshire, nice close state for me in Boston. And Alabama. Oklahoma. All caps. It's a very enthusiastic Oklahoma that's joined us. And the first three words that have come to mind are leadership, support, and encouragement. And that is from New Hampshire. Thank you, Sarah. Leadership, support, and encouragement. Another encouragement from Alabama and trust. Okay, and then Alabama also says dependable, dedicated, and encouraging. 
encouragement. So supervisor who's dependable, dedicated, and encouraging. Thank you, Brandy. A listener gives feedback and is trusting. I'm seeing some trends here, which is exactly what we were looking for. For a little bit longer to see what people say. Um, the three words I'm thinking about, some of the best supervision I've had, and the three words that came to mind, because it looks like I can't type it in, but is flexible, trusting, and passionate. Sam, I'm wondering if there are three about I, I'm, I'm not able to type it in either, but I wrote listens, gives feedback, and pushes me to try. Nice. So it sounds like some synonyms for potentially encouraging, too. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So we had encouragement, listening, um, trusting. Trusting came up a lot. Trusting and encouraging came up a lot. So trusting and encouraging can mean a lot of different things. And I think that as we go through today's webinar and look back to some of the coaching perspectives we touched on last week, plus the leadership strategies, and the way in which we, the different tools we can use that Sam mentioned, I think we'll get to all of these components and think about how we can start to create um, that supervision relationship with our staff. And what I would encourage you to do is if there are ways that you find that you have been able to effectively or more effectively embody some of these ways of working with your staff, to share that throughout our webinar today. Um, so thank you very much for doing that change in introduction. So we've got many different states and some very good connections between what we think of for supervision and good supervision. So as we mentioned, we're going to start with a little bit of a recap from last webinar. And what we spent a lot of time on last time was talking through the different coaching perspectives, how that relates to supervision, what is leadership, how do leadership and supervision, how do those connect. And so um, we are uploading a document into your WebEx. Tina is going to make that magic happen. And you're going to be able to download that from, um, the, from the WebEx platform. And it's called, a, it's called Linking Leadership. And once you open that, you're going to see a matrix of um, all of the supervision or the coaching attributes um, and the parallel process pieces that we talked about on your left. And over the top are the different leadership um, styles. And we're going to try to really intentionally connect those two together. So I have the um, document available for everyone to right-click. Um, just highlight the uh, file name, and that way you're able to save it to your flash drive or your desktop. Great. Thank you for those instructions, Tina. It's helpful. You're welcome. So um, as, as you're looking at the table um, and start filling it out, you can just mark a little X next to each category. Um, I'm going to go through the leadership styles and the supervision in coaching attributes that we talked about so that we are all on the same page as we go through it. Um, so it's a review and intentional connecting at the same time. So here's where we started last time. So we have this roadmap to coaching. And the idea is that there are these different values that exist within a coaching framework. And what we talked about last time was the connection between what coaching looks like with between a staff person and, and the person that you're serving within your agency. And how is that truly a parallel process to what you do in your supervision with staff? So how can you model those interactions with your staff and have it translate into the direct service setting? So what you have in front of you are these five different areas of coaching. And so self-assessment and goal setting, what we connected that to supervision was how to have a self-assessment for staff and talk to them about where they'd like to grow. And then being able to continue to encourage them to think about the ways that they can continue to grow. Is it professional development? Is it looking at another department? Is it um, another type of education that they would like to pursue? 
And then um, if we go over to the, the left side of the screen, we see building trusting relationships. So you can see how these are all very much connected. Um, but we want to demonstrate that we believe in the staff and highlight the things that they're doing really well to continue having that momentum and motivation for them to continue doing the hard work that they're doing. Problem solving, I'm jumping back and forth. This is probably hazardous driving, but um, to problem solving, um, what we were talking about a lot was being careful not to jump in and problem solve right from the beginning, but to allow the staff that you're supervising to come up with their own ideas for how to solve a problem and to offer our own advice and expertise after we've given some time to them to solve the problem on their own. Um, goals orientation. We want to model in our meetings with our staff how we remain um, goals oriented without diving into the crisis of the day or the crisis of the week. Um, so being able to stay on track and seeing the big picture through, noticing and validating the crisis, and also um, how do you continue to move on from the crisis. And then finally, accountability and follow-up. It's kind of like the nice bow on top of all of this that holds it together. So the importance of following through on what you say you're going to follow through on, um, demonstrating that you will consistently offer the support that you have promised you would offer, um, as much as you can, consistent supervision, space and time. Um, those are some strategies we talked about. So then, we also reviewed these leadership styles. And these leadership styles are, we did a quick poll last time, you know, based on the um, explanation of each of these styles, which feels like it resonates most with you. And I remember that last time I showed that by example was one that stuck out to me. And I think I was thinking so much about supervising with staff and how that translates to the direct service work. And if you're looking at the matrix that we've uploaded for you, um, it started to put some of those things into perspective for me as to whether I was thinking holistically enough about leadership styles. And I boxed myself into thinking this is how I am as a leader rather than recognizing that maybe leadership styles can um, exist within different parts of my identity as a supervisor, or my identity as someone who works within an agency. So that was a very quick recap from what we did last time. And now what we would love to do is hear from you in looking at this matrix, and you don't have to have filled out the whole thing, but you know, in looking at it, what stands out to you in linking the leadership styles and supervision, and what surprises you, um, I think the easiest might be to continue using that Q&A box. So if you have thoughts um, to share, please write those in the box. Um, I'll give a little bit of time for you to come up with your responses and what that was like. Stephanie, at this time, would you like for me to upload the actual form that we just um, uploaded for everyone? Oh, I thought it was uploaded. No? I, I had your PowerPoint presentation. Um, I just made it available for the attendees to download it um, on their desktop or um, um, desktop. To put it on the flat. screen. Yeah, I was going to put it on the screen for everyone. Oh, Is that okay? That'd be great. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> My limitation in technology. Here we go, guys. Let me um, enlarge it for you all to see it a lot better so you awesome. can look at it. Okay. <laughs> so when I was filling this out, what I noticed is um, just from the definitions that we talked about in the way that leadership is described, the two that didn't feel um, like they went with my social work supervision self were power and persuasion. So even though there were areas in the coaching attributes on the left that could potentially fit to those, I noticed myself avoiding 
putting X's next to those because I just I don't I don't resonate with those as much. But then I was realizing that I was limiting myself to thinking about the way in which different leadership styles are really effective um, for those varying pieces. So it's possible that part of your reaction is there are certain leadership styles that you really resonate with or don't, and that um, thinking about the way in which you supervise and lead your team um, is really evident through linking the leadership and the supervision styles. Sam, was there anything that stuck out to you in doing this? Um, I think it was no surprise that relationships showed up everywhere. Um, and I think this is going to be a key component in terms of parallel process for our, for people who are going to be doing the coaching and then similarly for supervisors to be doing the same. Um, I'm, I'm very curious to hear from any attendees if there's anything that you guys, that any of you noticed that's really surprised you about yourself or about this um, thinking about leadership here in, in relation to this coaching. Um, so if anybody has one thing, um, doesn't have to be complicated, just one thing that kind of jumped out at you and you can share it, um, we would love to hear. I'm sure that everybody, all, you all have important things to share that everybody would like to hear um, something that surprised you. So get those typing fingers moving. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or any patterns that you noticed yourself. Or questions, you know, <laughs> anything really. So I say we give it about one minute, and otherwise we have other content we we can go through. We're just going to change course a little bit, so I don't want to cut off anybody's thoughts. And Ms. Stephanie, I will have all documents uploaded at the end of the web webinar, so if you didn't have the opportunity to download this one, I will have it uh, pulled up again for everyone, okay? Awesome. Thank you so much, Tina. You're welcome. Ah, it's back. <laughs> okay. So hopefully as we go through the webinar and we, we get warmed up with this way of um, interacting that we can we can share a little bit more with the community of supervisors that we're hoping to build. So um, hopefully more things inspire you to share. I'm going to pass the ball to you, Sam. Okay. Sounds good. Okay, so we're now at the point where we um, are really going to kind of push it, push a little bit and make this a little bit different, I think, from the way we've done webinars with this community in the past. Um, we really want to acknowledge that there's this group of people who have expertise and experience out in the field who are doing this work, and that's you guys. Um, so we have some things to share, but we really feel that we want you to be able to share with each other. And we realize it's hard to do that remotely because you can't make eye contact or see what's going on. But we're going to kind of give this a try. It's you know something new, and what we would like to do is spend some time doing some reflections from the field in relation to the supervision. So the first thing I'm interested in hearing, and I, we sent, for those of you who attended that the last session, we had encouraged you to, to pick a goal and try something new and realizing that work is very busy and that it might you might not have had time to do something like this. Um, and for those of you who didn't attend, you might not have, have planned to do this. So what we would like to do is just hear from everybody who's in attending the session today. If you could share one goal that you have from session one. So if you actually had a goal and tried something out, type it in. Um, and if you didn't have a chance to try a goal, type in something that you think you would like to try moving forward in the next month um, in terms of your role as a supervisor and in terms of your role in supporting um, this coaching process in, in your programs. Um, and so I'm going to give you a minute, and what I'd like you to do is just write in the Q&A section and um, any kinds of goals that you might have related to supervision that 
grew out of the session one presentation or the little snippet of information that we reviewed this morning or the earlier before this happened. Okay, well we have one goal that's appeared here. It's The goal is to, to let my staff come to their own conclusions rather than me suggesting what they do. Hmm. So this is helping them, letting them kind of figure out what it is they want to do or coming up with a solution or an understanding of something rather than providing that information. Which is a little bit what we're trying to do here with, you, with uh, this community as well. <laughs> In the, spirit of, process. <laughs> in the spirit of parallel process. Any other goals or things that people are wanting to try? Or did try, perhaps? And there are no wrong or right answers, so take a chance. Um, okay, so I have another one. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to attend session one. However, I'm always trying to carve time to allow more opportunities to listen and be available. Mm. Awesome. Thank you. That's for that. Thank you, Sammy. There's another the first, one? Okay. The first two prizes. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, was, I saw another one. Um, another goal that was talking about having consistent supervision. So um, it looks like they're wondering how to make sure that they meet with one-on-one -on -one with supervisees on a consistent basis. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that can be really hard to do when we're going so fast and we have a lot of administrative things that we need to make sure we do. So, so trying to carve out the time mm -hmm. for a regular meeting. Mm -hmm. That's what it seems like. Yeah. Any other goals that people would like to share that they're thinking about? There is no goal that is too small or too large. Or even an idea about a goal. Or you're wondering how would you start working on it. Okay. So I think what we're going to do now is because we have this community of experts, um, we're going to do a little bit of a deep dive. And so we need a volunteer. And we've had two goals um, offered up. Uh, and so I wonder if one of the two folks who have shared their goals would um, volunteer to have us um, do a deep dive, and then what we will do is have the community ask any questions they have about getting, trying to better understand what the goal is, how they're thinking about it, how they go about doing it, and then share some ideas from the group and the community to, to think about what are some ways that they might get to that goal, some action, some action items, some uh, strategies, some things that they've tried. So I see... Um, um, I'm wondering, Sammy, if you might be willing to be the volunteer for us to talk about your goal, and if that's okay, just say, make a note yes or um, give us a thumbs up, and then we can have other folks kind of ask you some questions about it and get share some ideas they might have about um, your um, goal. Great. Thanks, Sammy. <laughs> we appreciate that, trying this new effort, so thank you for being a... A, a, a willing part, willing participant as we experiment on this. So to the rest of the community, I know I have some names, Sarah, Brandy, Elizabeth, Wendy. If any of you have any questions you might have for Sammy about what she's thinking about r related to this goal or trying to understand more about what she's hoping to achieve, and then we can dig into some ideas that you might have. I have Sammy unmuted. Um, they have the floor to um, speak. Great, thank you. Sammy, are you there? 
You're yeah. un- you're unmuted. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah, I'm here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Any questions from the group? Because I can I've got lots, but I want to have others ask questions first before I start digging. We also have a hand up from Miss Wendy LaCla- LaClaire. I'm sorry if I messed up your last name. Great. Um, I can unmute you if you um ready to ask your question. Here you go. Yeah. I'm gonna have to. Yeah. Wendy, are you there? Yes. Yeah. Uh oh. It's some feedback. I'm sorry, Wendy. <laughs> Okay. Um, just go ahead. Wendy, go ahead and type in your question. There's a lot of echo and feedback. So I'm, while we're waiting, I'm just going to clarify with Sammy that your goal is to carve out more time to allow, to carve time to allow for more opportunities to listen and be available. Does that sound correct? I just want to make sure Sammy's on is unmuted so he can confirm. Okay. Sammy's yeah. unmuted. He can yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I cover two different counties and I, I supervise a number of different workers, so uh it's always a challenge to give the workers a certain amount of time that they need and it's always like I said, it's a challenge for me to uh, make sure I I try to manage my time to give to them. Great, thank you. Mm-hmm. And we're, I think we're waiting still for the question from Wendy. She wanted to clarify something. Um, we do have one question here for you, Sammy, which is asking, um, what are you currently do- doing in terms of scheduling your supervision? Do you have set times? Any set times, I kind of play. I kind of play it more based on how the day goes by. But we we do have we do have um, scheduled monthly conferences with each person. Uh, those aren't really scheduled throughout the month. But um, usually, I just kind of have to play it by ear for the most part. Great. Okay. And then uh, I have another question. This is from Brandy. Um, she said, will you be carving out time for workers as a unit, or do you do this with them individually? Uh, primarily individually. Uh-huh. Uh, it seems like they, they they get more benefit from the individual uh, time spent with them. I previously, before, used to have monthly conferences as a group, and I kind of shied away from that a little bit, but it just seems like they, from an individual standpoint, they, I, I get a better response and feel for what's going on with them from that standpoint. Great. Now, one of the things I'm wondering about is there, um, related to this topic, is there anything that you would like to get some ideas or feedback from the group on specifically that you think would be helpful? Um, really, just, just anything that, that works for them as far as how, how they manage their time. Mm-hmm. Because that that seems like always an issue that we're dealing with uh, pretty much every day as far as time management goes. But anything uh-huh. that, anything that works on their behalf that they've seen success, that's something that I think would be beneficial. Okay, so so for the, any of you who are listening in, any strategies that you use for managing the time and fitting it in? Um, the other question in the sense that I have here is how many staff report to you and do you ever meet them by on the phone? Do you ever talk to them by telephone instead of in person? Um, I have seven that I supervise. And um, usually I, the, the monthly conferences are done face-to-face. Mm. 
uh, now we do we do communicate through link and other means, but primarily we we talk face to face. Yeah, for, your, for the actual your formal supervision meeting. Uh huh. Right. And can I ask one another clarifying question? Um, so, Sam, when you meet with them monthly, how long are you meeting with each individual? Usually, <laughs> okay. Uh, usually, thirty to forty-five minutes. Um, now, and 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 I'm thinking of primarily for those that are experienced that are permanent employees. Now, for a brand new employee, it may be two or three times a month not more as far as yeah. that goes. So it differentiates based on how long they've been working for you and, and where they are in the learning process. Great. Yeah, correct. Helpful. So anyone um, on the call have any ideas or um, suggestions of things that they've tried or thoughts about Sammy's goal? Sammy, I'm curious how you would you would oh, hold on. Sorry, we have a <laughs> we have a suggestion here. At our organization, mo most supervisors have a set standing time to meet with staff. If there's no time to meet, we cancel it. Or if there's no need to meet, we cancel it. Is that something that you could do, you could try? So it sounds like what they do is they have the regular meeting, and if there isn't anything to talk about in the meeting, then there's no nothing that needs to be discussed, they just cancel it, and that helps to manage some of the time, frees up the time. Or just has a consistent time when they are, are used to having supervision. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's a good idea. That's something I, I can think about and, and look at implementing as well. That way you're holding the time in your calendar, mm -hmm. and but if you if you need it, it's there. If you don't, you can have the time back. Yeah. Um, and from Brandy, uh, let your workers decide when a good time for them is, and to try meet their need to to try meet their needs. So having them propose something that works for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good idea. Sounds like having right. staff do problem solving before you're doing problem solving. Um, and I wonder about the balance too about you know, needs that they might have in the time you have and how you can have those kind of compromise conversations to set up um, what works well. Yeah. Any other suggestions? Not to put you on the spot, Sarah, Elizabeth, Wendy, any of you guys have some thoughts or ideas? <laughs> This is the chance. So if you if you if you're following up on the, if you participate in the introduction, then you get called on. That's your reward. Suggestion. There we go. From Elizabeth. Thank you, Elizabeth. Schedule one day out of the month, and schedule appointment for one hour increments throughout the day for each employee. So you pick the day and just schedule the, spend the whole day doing that supervision. Interesting. Elizabeth, is this something that you do with your teams? Um, and from Wendy, thanks Wendy, set, set the agenda prior to telephone, telephone supervision calls. So going in there having a plan for what you want to talk about is a great strategy because then you're using the time well. Wendy, we are on the same wavelength. We're going to get to agenda setting <laughs> in just a minute. So. Okay. Oh, and then we've got Sarah. Um, she has bi-weekly supervision with staff and a one team meeting a month. <laughs> Fabulous. And from Elizabeth, this suggestion came from a coworker, um, Deborah, who I did this successfully when she was a supervisor. So this is Elizabeth's suggestion of having the day out of the month. She got this from another colleague. So there she is reinforcing the idea that we have, that we're trying right here, which is to get ideas from each other because the best ideas come from your coworkers and not from those of us who are necessarily imparting the knowledge. Mm. Very cool. Thank you, Elizabeth. And to Deborah, who I don't know if she's on or not. <laughs> Thanks for the idea. Okay, I think um I think we're gonna move on. Um 
because we have some more things we want to make sure we have time to talk through. Are there any last thoughts or questions or anybody who wants to throw out another goal just so we can hear what you're thinking about before we move on to our next section? All right. So I'm going to um I don't I'm going to ask Tina to pass the ball for me. I don't see it. I, for some reason, I have a different view today um, of my screen. And let's definitely move, take us through the next section of our presentation, which is not that. Mm -mm. Yes, I will move the ball for you, Miss Sam. Thank Sorry. Thank you so much. And no worries. Miss Stephanie. Thank you. And we're just to, to let you know is we're we are now moving on to kind of building the toolkit. So. I yeah. give you Miss Stephanie. Thank you. Um, we are going to build this, and we're going to use this particular framework for thinking about how we build our toolbox. So when we think about supervision, and particularly when we're thinking about integrating these coaching practices into a supervision model to create that continuous parallel process, the, the definition of supervision that helps me stay oriented to thinking about it that way is this three-pronged approach to supervision. So you've got administrative, educative, and reflective. And the idea that all three components need space within the same supervision. Um, so administrative is the more traditional component and remains crucial, so checking in on caseloads, what number are active, um, you know, what, what kind of um, paperwork needs to be handed in on time, um, are there any delays in the paperwork. And my assumption is that this is something that's very much a part of your supervision and that you, you know how to do this piece. Um, and it's really just related to metrics, right? And so then when we move on to educative, it's recognizing that you as a supervisor have expertise and lessons learned to share with staff. Um, so if we assume a growth mindset of our staff, which means that they want to keep learning and growing as people, as employees, um, then we want to continue to learn and develop ourselves and promote how they can continue to learn and develop in their jobs. Um, and so you as a supervisor have knowledge, have experience that you can share with them to increase those skills that they, they already have but could, could improve even further. Um, and it is that delicate balance of recognizing that we don't want to solve problems for them, um, but we also want to recognize that there's a reason for supervisors and there are things that we can share. The reflective piece is really what was set in the tone of the way we did webinar last time, which was that we're talking about, it's the one that's most closely related to the parallel process. So noticing what your staff are saying to you, noticing that when they're talking about a certain case, you notice that they're getting really amped up and their body language shifts and their voice gets more rapid um, and recognizing that response shift and saying, hey, I'm noticing this is, you're talking about this client differently than the other clients. You know, what might be going on there? Why is this one affecting you differently than others? Um, to be able to really unpack that and to do so in a quiet and calm space so that they can really unpack that for themselves and then have their best foot forward into their meetings with their clients. So it can feel like a lot to balance all three of these. Um, and it, it's just a matter of the way that I found it easier to be able to apply is to just think, you know, if I look at my supervision practice now, what am I spending the most of my time on? So if I go with, Typically what happens, which is that administrative takes up the chunk of time because we all have deliverables and outcomes and contracts that we need to follow. And so sometimes the pressures of that take over the time that we have with our supervisees. If I'm finding that I'm spending a lot of time in my supervision talking about those things, the question I always ask myself is how much of the things that I've covered could I be doing over email? Um, or could I write like a team meeting or a team email? Um, so I always like to ask myself, how much of this is really important to process through conversation and how much of it can just be delivered via email? And oftentimes I find that there are kind of checkbox items that I'm going through with my staff that I think I could just 
send them an email and they could respond to it and I wouldn't have to waste the precious time that I have, which if you're only meeting with staff on a monthly basis, 30 to 45 minutes, you've got to maximize that 30 to 45 minutes, right? And so that's just an easy check that I um, find for myself to allow for a little bit more of the educative and reflective process. So one of the ways in which I also stay oriented towards this. So what I do want to say is this supervision agenda is tailored to a supervision that is 60 minutes long because that's um, what we tend to do at Empath. Um, and so 60 minutes um, goes by quickly and so 30 to 45 minutes also goes by very quickly. And the idea is that you've got different chunks of time um, and if you set up the agenda and you set up what your time limit is for each, you're more likely to get through each of them. Um, and you have to practice doing it because if you're not used to setting agendas, then it might feel a little prescriptive um, and not reflective in that way. So you have a check-in in the beginning. And I think the important piece about the check-in is to hear what the staff really want to spend their time on with you. Um, so I think one of the person, one of, I think it was Brandy, um, had suggested that when you set up your supervision, figure out what time and it works for your staff and what they need from you. So really orienting the supervision to what is it that they need from you at that time. Um, and then sharing back with them um, what it is that you also need to cover. And then you have administrative for 10 minutes. So, you know, what are the the day-to-day -day case management pieces that we need to make sure we cover the flow of the way that we do our work? And then participants. So um, there's different strategies for how you can bring in clients, participants, customers into your meetings. Um, sometimes it's simple as doing a really random audit and picking one from your data system and saying, okay, I've picked this one. Let's look at where the paperwork was, is with all of this, their status, um, and talk through your experiences with this client. Talk through your most recent meeting with them. And then be able to think through that meeting and ask them if there's anything they would improve or would want to improve on that meeting um, and process through with them what, what that interaction and relationship is like. And then finally, it's like a buffer, a back burner item, five minutes, things to just have on our radar as we continue in our work. Um, we can't get through everything and want to be mindful that we want to check in on something maybe in a couple weeks via email or phone. So again, this is for 60 minutes. So if you're doing 30 to 45 minutes, finding a way to shorten the time in places. Um, and my recommendation, if at all possible, is to keep the ratios about right. So in terms of participant time being the longest, the reason that exists is if you're trying to embody a coaching perspective and your team is learning new ways to work with participants, clients, customers, then a little extra time in particular is needed in that area to help them feel comfortable with a different way of interacting with the people that they're working with or to hone in on the skills that they're really interested in working on. So that is one sample agenda. Okay, so agendas are nice and the idea of having administrative, educative, and uh, reflective practices are also nice, but where do I start? So um, how can we break down the, the, the ideas of those and put them into a more practical way? Because what we really want is for you to walk away from this feeling like you can do something um, differently or add something more intentional into your practice. So one of the ways that you can start setting the tone into a reflective, educative um, way of working is different self assessments that exist. So one of the ones that I really like to use is called a learning styles questionnaire. And we've all heard of learning styles. Usually it's visual, audio, or feeling-based processing, and what does that mean for how you study, um, take in information, take in trainings. And this learning styles questionnaire really expands beyond that to think about um, the way that you prefer to experience the world, I'm going to say, it's a little broader in that way. Um, and we are going to upload this document um, for you to be able to have access to. Um, and then when we follow up with you on this webinar, you'll get this 
soon in order to be able to um, use this with your staff. So feel free to open that if you'd like to. We, we're not going to go through it today. It's too long to do in this webinar, um, but we wanted you to make sure that you have it. So if you want it today, make sure that you download it off of the webinar. That's how you have the quickest access to it. So it breaks it down into four different types of learning styles. So we've put them out here for you to see just the general definitions. We have an activist, a reflector, a theorist, and a pragmatist. So you can see how this takes a bit more of a bird's eye view on the way that you interact with the world and what that, the implications of that could mean for who you have on your team. So activists are those who just dive right in. They love just trying things out and learning by trying. Um, and it's kind of a no fear approach. Reflectors like to take a step back and think through every possible option before choosing one. Um, theorists, theorists are really thinking through the different observations they've had um, and the theories that they know and how to merge the two um, to be as rational and logical as possible. Um, and pragmatists are a little bit of a combination of theorists and activists, I think of, in that they are interested in trying out new ideas and theories and techniques, but they're applying their learning um, a little bit more so than diving right in. So, for example, when I've done this, and this might not be surprising in the short amount of time you've gotten to know me, but I'm not an activist at all. I, I think I score like a one on activist. And then reflector, theorist, and pragmatist are pretty close for me. So the idea that I like to take my time and take a step back and see all my options and, and make decisions based on what I've experienced before or what others are um, have experienced as well. Um, and Sam, I, did you have a chance to look at this for yourself? I haven't had a chance to complete this. I was just thinking I didn't I didn't do it. So I'm going to add that as one of my goals to, to uh, think about and Great. encourage others to do the same. That sounds good. Um, and it's very it's just very interesting to think about, you know, what does it mean for the way that I um, engage in change? So a lot of us when we're talking about the purpose of the EYES project is to bring um, coaching into your work in TANF, and that's a change. And so how do you approach change, and what do you as a leader need in order to feel comfortable with change, and what might that mean for your staff? So the way that this can be used with your, with your team is that you can complete it as a team or individually, and then recognize that you probably all have different learning styles that you prefer. And what does that mean for your supervision? What does that mean for your management of the team? Um, so for example, I, being more of a reflector, was supervising a staff person who was an activist. And so I have a binder of the readings to do. I have checklists of people to observe before they go out to the field. I have um, the number of visits that I need to observe. And so, but reading material and watching videos wasn't the way that the staff person was taking in information. Um, and so after doing this questionnaire with them, we realized that we had opposing ways of learning new ways of doing things. And so I had to be flexible with the way that I was onboarding the staff person by allowing them to try and maybe watch or um, shadow meetings before doing all of the reading because they needed to watch the interaction and be a part of that before applying the readings to that and being able to develop their skills that way. So it allowed me to take a step back and think about how I was training new staff people. Um, and then just thinking about how do they, how do the learning styles differ across your team? So when you're thinking about projects that you could give your different team members, there might be certain projects that people are suited for more so based on the learning style preferences they have. Um, and then your ongoing supervision, not just onboarding, but you know what's a what's a supervision method that that might be more effective for some staff than others. So if you have a really um, theoretical thinking person, you might need to ground a lot of the work you're doing in theories and in kind of concrete thinking about why certain processes are in place. Um, whereas an activist might be like, okay, those are the processes. I'm just going to go and this is how I'm going to do it. And so just recognizing that those, those differences can really impact the way that you build that relationship with staff. 
So, plus everyone enjoys a little self-assessment every once in a while because um, it's always interesting. So that's one um, to add to your toolbox potentially um, that you can do with individual supervision or as a team. And then Sam, back to you to talk about another type of tool. And I'm going to, oh, great. Okay. Um, before I jump into the next tool, I just want to make sure any, nobody has any questions for Stephanie related to the learning styles. Oh, thank you. Sure. There'll be lots of chances to ask questions. And we're here. You can always email us. <laughs> Okay, so um, continuing in this spirit of building a growth mindset and helping our um, teams learn something new um, and supporting the educative reflective component of um, supervision, I wanted to just present an idea in terms of what the process might look like towards building mastery in a new, in, try, in doing something new. Um, so what you see here is that somebody might try a new activity, something completely different with um, their participants or your, or your clients, which might be that they're going to spend the first 15 minutes just talking and listening to a client, and with, that might be something really different to them. Um, and so they might try something new, and it might go one way or the other, and then they might have a chance to reflect and plan for the next time, and then they try it again, and they get better at it. And then they take some time to reflect and plan, and they try it again and so on and so on until eventually they develop mastery with this particular thing that they're trying to do that's new. Um, so you as supervisors are here to help support them in moving through the, this process by playing in both an educative and a reflective role. So you have the one tool understanding potentially what their learning style is. And we're going to spend a lot of time in a more extended um, webinar talking about setting goals. And that's obviously something that um, you would do in collaboration with your supervisee. But uh, the next tool with, that I'd like to talk about for your, for your toolbox is doing observation. And so here you see oh, I always somehow page up the entire there we go. <laughs> uh, next third webinar, I'm going to have this down. It's going to be perfect. And you say, ah, oh, she's. Just, I'm. I'm moving through this process. I'm on the improving activity uh, part of the slide. Um, so the tool that that you would use to support um, your your staff and colleagues is the the tool of observation. Is what I'm calling it. Um, and it's not just any observation. It's planned observation. So that might be something others, some of you have tried, and it might be something different. So actually observing your um, your supervisee in action. Um, and the goal is to be really focused in your observation. It, you want it to be goal-driven, so you want to go in there with a reason for why you're doing the observation. It's something you would determine in collaboration with your staff person. You wouldn't go in and say, ah, oh, I'm going to go watch them do this without them knowing what the purpose of the observation is. And you want it to focus on something objective, not something that feels in your gut right or wrong, but really having some objective information that you're tracking. Um, so how does this work? So the first thing is you're going to develop your goal, the goal of your observation. Um, and I, I have some little notes to myself to help kind of illustrate this, and I want to make sure that I have, I give you the the right example. Um, so perhaps your goal, sorry, let me just pull it up. Um, you might say, you, as an example, you might say, I want to support my coaches, I'm going to call them coaches, or the caseworkers, in seeing how her, their positive feedback that they're giving to their clients helps the client. So you're going to go in and, and the goal that you've made together is that we want to see how, that's, how, that's, how the client is responding and how they feel about that. So now you've got your goal. Um, oh, I did it again. All right, there we go. Um, so before you're going to do that, you have to make a plan. Who are you going to observe? What specifically are you going to look for? And where are you going to do it? Um, so in this case, because you're interested in seeing how the client is responding to the feedback that the, your, um, that the caseworker is, is um, the, the feedback, the positive feedback, your plan is to observe the reactions of the client because in the moment they might not be noticing that. 
Um, and what you're going to observe is you might say, I'm going to just make a note of how often they smile at you and how often they're looking at you and how engaged they are with you. And then um, we'll observe it during that first meeting that you have with the client because that's what you're working on. And so that might be the plan for doing the focused observation. Um, and then the last piece is how will you do this? Um, are you going to take lots of notes and write everything that you see? That might be one strategy. It might be that you're going to kind of take a checklist and you're going to make a note of how many times the client smiles, how many of the times the client looks at you, and how many times the client turns away. And you're just going to kind of do a little checklist and you, where you would be able to say, I noticed that your client smiled at you 20 times in an hour. Or you might be able to give lots of written detail. So that's kind of a little tool that you can use in terms of how to use observation. Um, I wanted to show a little video to kind of highlight and illustrate the idea of using a focused observation tool and why a focused observation would be important. So Tina's going to play this for us, and I want everybody to take a moment and enjoy this scene. If you've seen Ms. this Wilson, before. did you want me to allow the attendees to see it one time? Because I'm going to stop it at 30 seconds in so they can answer the one poll question. Sounds um, good. And that, so a pop -up. Okay, everyone, I'm going to close the video. you got to pay close attention. It's going to be 30 seconds before we continue on with the video, guys. Just bear with me. And you can put your response in the uh, Q&A box. Um, I'm going to play back the video. Um, I was going to do a poll question. Did everyone hear the video clearly, hopefully? I think we got through the whole exercise, so I wonder if we could just ask the question that comes up at the end of the video. Yeah, I think that's okay. fine. Yeah. Okay. We'll, and we well, will replay it because I think people We can replay it. it. Yeah. But we'll um, just... So before we do that. Sorry um, about that. Before we do that, perhaps um, if anybody wants to venture a guess as to how many times the ball was passed, and you can just pause that w until people. Thank you so much. So okay. Anybody... Um, so you want me to go ahead and finish the whole video? No, no just I pause just, for just a moment. pause the video, and I want everybody who watched the video to to tell us how many times they counted the ball being passed. Okay. Let me get that up real quick. I'm going to do the um, poll question, if possible, for those who may not have audio available to them as well. Yeah, and we did, they, they can, can just put it in the Q&A box. They don't need to poll it. Oh, all right. There it is. Oh, yeah. That's all right. This is fine, too. So everybody answer how many times you the players in the white were passing the ball. The um, poll answers will be anonymous. It will not have your name next to the answer. So if you did get it incorrectly, we won't be able to know it was you. <laughs> okay, I'm going to go ahead and close the poll questions. Um, it should be within 20 seconds, and the uh, results will populate for everyone to see. And then I will start, continue the video.
Okay, I will finish the video in just one moment. times the players wearing white pass the ball. Did you spot the gorilla? For people who haven't seen or heard about a video like this before, about half missed the gorilla. If you knew about the gorilla, you probably saw it. But did you notice the curtain changing color or the player on the black team leaving the game? Let's rewind and watch it again. Supervision. 
Um, I know in my work, I have heard the term reflection from for many, many years, and always wondered, well, what does it mean? How do you do it? It's it's so much of it comes from a gut feeling, and um, I found this this framework that I think is really helpful in terms of helping your supervisees to um, use reflection to, to grow and develop some mastery. So there's two components to this, and this actually comes out of the early childhood field in terms of working with teachers, but I think it's applicable to many different settings. Um, so the types of questions, there's two ways you can, you can look at this. On the left column, you see there's the content of the types of questions you're going to ask to help support reflection in your supervisees. So it might be questions related to what do you know, it might be questions to related to what did you do, what did you try. It might be questions related to what was the result, how did it work out. And then the last, mushiest one, but my fa personal favorite, is what, how was the process. Um, and then there's four types of questions, which might be what your goal is for what they're going to get out of this, this process of reflecting. Um, there are questions related to awareness. So are you thinking, I want to support my supervisee's awareness in relation to kind of what the result was. Um, analysis, I want to kind of dig into it and see if we can understand what was going on. Um, so you might think, I want to support my supervisees, have them analyze what they know about this process, what they know about this new thing they're doing. Um, it might be trying to come up with alternatives. So thinking, you might want to support your supervisee's thinking and reflection on what did you try to do and what are some alternatives you can think of in terms of what you do next time. And then finally is some more action-oriented things that you might want to think through with your supervisee. Um, so you decide in collaboration with them as well as um, what you know about their learning styles and what their goals are. Um, what types of questions you might bring to the table in, in your supervision meetings with your supervisees. Um, so that's just a little glimmer, glimpse of reflection. We will have some more resources moving um, down the road. And what we'd like to do now is Stephanie and I are going to um, do a little uh, show for you of a supervision okay. meeting. And what we'd like to ask you to do is to watch us. And as we do certain things or certain practices, um, make a note of them in the Q&A section of the, um, of the uh, box, and let's see if we hit on some of the things that we talked about today and you notice us doing. Um, so I'm going to take play the role of the caseworker, and Stephanie is going to be my supervisor. Yes, and one other piece that I want to make sure we mention before we dive into this is there's another document that you're going to be getting that's about, uh, it's a note taking sheet for supervision practice. It's something that's really helped me. So when we're thinking about balancing the different parts of our supervision, so that administrative, educative, and reflective piece, how do we make sure we make time for that? I, I have an outline for all of my supervision meetings. It's the exact same for all supervisees. And I just fill in their name and then fill in um, what we talked about under each category. So it's things like, you know, what participants we talked about, um, what administrative things we need to check in, are there areas that they want to be developing in and trainings that they need to do, um, and how are the goals going that that supervisee and I have worked on before. So it, it helps me stay oriented to that space um, and be able to get through all of the pieces. And then I can also jot down the pieces that I want to make sure I discuss with the staff person ahead of time on that note sheet. So um, I will be, go, will be going through this role play as if I have this, and I do in fact, have this outline in front of me. Um, and we will share that with you. So it's another tool for your toolbox. All right, Sam, are we starting? Let's do it. Okay. Action. Action. Hi, Sam. It's nice to see you today. How are you? I'm okay. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Thank you. So um, I wanted to start today by just asking what you would like to make sure that we cover today. Well, I really want to talk to you about this new way I'm trying out when I first meet new clients. Okay. So you want to talk about this new way of working with clients. Could you explain a little bit more about what you mean so that I understand what you hopefully talk about today? Yeah, well, you know, I used to spend my first meeting getting all my forms done and getting all my paperwork in, and now I'm not getting those done. And I'm taking this time to build the relationship, and now I feel like I'm not getting my forms done, and I'm just not sure if I'm even 
building a relationship with them. So I I don't know. Great. That's what's going on. That's what's going on. Um, so what I'm hearing is a few different things, and I'm hearing that um, it's a really great topic for us to talk about because it's something new, and um, you are mentioning that you know you felt like you've been building a relationship before, and now you're also trying to figure out how to make the time for that. Um, I was also hoping today that we could do a quick check-in on you know how your participants are doing um, and your caseload breakdown, and I'm wondering if we can incorporate the way things are going for you right now into that. Sure. Okay, so it sounds like with this new coaching approach, just so, to make sure that I fully understand it, it sounds like the new coaching approach um, is something that you're adjusting to and you're not sure about some of the pieces. Do I have that right? Yeah, that sounds that's great because it's really worrying me. Okay, it's really worrying you. Yeah. And what about it is worrying you? So I'm really frustrated. I was already getting to know them anyway. I mean, my mm -hmm. job is to figure out if they're eligible and what benefits they qualify for. So I'm completing the forms. If I complete the forms quickly, then I can get them services, and that's what they need, which is why they came to me in the first place, right? And that's why I have a, I have a relationship with them already. Um, they answer all my questions, and I know what they need. So I know I've got a good relationship, so I, I'm, I'm not getting the forms done. So having a relationship, a good relationship with them is really important to you. Yes, and that's that was already happening. Okay. So what I'm hearing is it's a balance of the good relationship and the assessments and that we're talking about this coaching approach and it feels like two separate things. And so I'm wondering if we can look at the assessments that we need to do um, and that you need to complete within the first period of time with your clients. And then use one of your cases to talk through that and then unpack a little bit more about what's feeling difficult to you. Could that work? Yeah, that's great. Somebody came in yesterday and I want to do the, the TANF work personal responsibility agreement with her. So that would be great to talk through that. Okay, great. Cut. Let's do that. <laughs> okay. So this is our attempt to try to illustrate a potential um, supervision meeting um, with the caveat that neither of us work currently in a TANF office. So for those of you who found that amusing, then we're glad you enjoyed our comedy. Um, and hopefully there were some things that we did um, that jumped out at you in terms of the supervision process itself that reflect some of the things we've been talking about today. And if you, anybody would like to either um, write in the Q&A section of something they noticed that we did um, in relation to what we've talked about today, or if somebody's really brave and wants to get the prize for waving their hand and joining the conversation with by their voice. Actually, Sammy, you've already got that prize. I <laughs> if wants to get a prize and keep up with Sammy, then um, that would be great as well. So I'm noticing that um, Elizabeth noticed, um, and you can see I'm very used to reflecting here, but <laughs> Elizabeth is saying that she noticed reflective statements and listening. Um, and then Wendy is sharing that there was a check-in and staff discussion points with clarification, segue to participate, review, observe, staff expression of frustration. So um, it, if I unpack Wendy's statement a little bit more, so noticing and recognizing the frustration and validating that it's okay and using that as a way to then segue into really um, reviewing the different policies and procedures in place and to process through participant experiences um, with that staff person. Which, Wendy, that's exactly what we were doing. So um, one of the strategies we were trying to demonstrate was, was creating a, a space where we're opening up and setting the tone for the supervision meeting. And then, Wendy, what you noticed about segueing into um, participant review is that, you know, is there a way to kind of cover your administrative and do it so in a reflective way? That's the question I put out to the group. So is there a way to cover the administrative basis that you need to? So changes in forms or making sure that they're getting complete on time and do it so that it is in a, done in a reflective way. And so the reason I ask that 
question is because I what I don't want folks to feel like they're walking away with, and if you do, you know, please talk to us, but that we're saying, okay, add more to your plates. Um, here are all the ways that you need to improve the work that you're doing. Um, rather, it's it's showing you what you're already doing and just thinking intentionally about the way in which you are doing those pieces. So if you're spending time with staff, how can you be spending your time with staff in a particular way, a way that you've decided is the best way to help that staff person that grow and help participants. Um, and so by weaving in these different components of supervision, our hope is that that would help you get to that point. Um, so that's why I asked that question, or want you to think about that piece. Again, you all have the um, raise your hand feature. Um, if you're not able to type in or don't feel comfortable typing in, you can also um, raise your hand and we can unmute you so you can verbally ask your question or provide your suggestion. And Wendy has shared um, an example of talking about using parallel, the, pop, the opportunity for using parallel process. I'm. I also wonder, I, we have kind of used that word and I just want to make sure mm -hmm. we kind of, well, at least when I'm talking about it and I'm guessing that Stephanie and I are on the same page about this, is when we're talking about the parallel process, the idea is that the experience that your staff is getting in their relationship with you is parallel or going to be, if you provide that experience, they will do the same for their clients. So if you listen and they feel heard, then they're more likely to listen to their own clients and feel heard. And I'd love to hear Stephanie's additional comments about that because she's beautifully articulate about that. <laughs> Sorry, it's nice of you. Um, I think that, I agree with that piece, and the idea is also that you're building skills um, that can translate, and you are noticing, um, you're able to use the skill of noticing to see when things are getting affected. So when I mentioned the example earlier about um, noticing if a staff person is getting really affected by a certain case or a certain client, being able to reflect that back so that they're more reflective in their process with the client. Um, so we often can't really see how we're reacting to things, and so it can be really helpful to have someone else help point that out um, and recognize that the best way to build self-regulation skills is through the back-and-forth interaction. So the back-and-forth interaction I have with the staff person leads to more regulation, less crisis-focused talk, hopefully, and then that translates into the work with um, participants. So, um, Many years ago, I heard somebody say this little quote of, do unto others as you will have them do mm -hmm. unto others. Yeah, that's like the social work or uh, supervision <laughs> reframe. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Any other thoughts or reactions to our a little acting, beginning of our acting career? <laughs> uh, hopefully the end of mine. No, so <laughs> the, um, the, Sorry, point the, for, the point for Wendy's uh, bringing up the opportunity for a parallel process, what I wanted to just make sure we're really clear on is that um, what Sam demonstrated was that she was really frustrated by the changes that are happening, right? Um, and then I was using that as a way to validate that she's frustrated and think about how we can incorporate her frustration into the topics that we need to get through for the day and use that in a way that's productive. And so if I'm doing that in supervision with her, why are we saying that that is a parallel process? Well, that's probably what a lot of your staff are experiencing with their clients. Their clients are frustrated. Their benefits are less than they expected to be. They're frustrated by the work requirements. Um, they don't understand why they have to meet with you in order to continue receiving certain benefits. And so um, the more that you can model that and use your supervision as a way to practice that space, um, the more they're able to take those skills and apply them. So I wanted to make that a really tangible concept. Great. Thank you. So here's your toolbox at least the start of one. So what we did today is we just went through um, different tools, whether that's a piece of paper that you're getting, such as the Learning South questionnaire, a sample agenda, 
or the note-taking sheet, all of which will be sent to you. Um, those are the paper ones. Or if it's skill-based um, things that are being added to your toolbox, such as the um, skill of observation and then using observation and thinking through observation in a reflective way or just simply using reflection um, throughout your practice. Um, our goal with this image is just to be clear that these are tools being added to your toolbox and that you don't need to do all of them, but maybe one of them is inspiring to you to, to try out with your team or even try it with other supervisors and think through how can this apply to your work. So um, we hope that this is the start to a continuously growing toolbox. So, um, and with that, I just ask if there are any questions, lessons learned. There was a request for downloading for number three. So, um, Wendy, could you clarify for number three, is it the agenda or the notes? I, I'm not sure which of the documents you're asking for. Ms. Stephanie, I will download all the um, tools that you provided in today's presentation uh, once we uh, end the webinar. So Great. I'll have them all available for everyone who may have missed it. Perfect. So just before, watch out for that. Before we conclude, we would love to hear from every one of you. If you could share just one takeaway, something that surprised you, something, well, I used not surprised you, something that's new that you learned that you thought was interesting. Um, just something that you will be taking with you from this webinar. Mm. Supervision should be offered regularly at a time that is convenient to the worker. So that's one, one takeaway that we have. Thank you. Well, that's a relief. So I'm glad somebody is getting a takeaway from this or has a takeaway that they will think about, reflect on, or try. My takeaway is that doing supervision virtually is harder than in person, I will say. So there's one to think about, too. It's possible, and you might need to do virtual supervision, but it's harder for me. Um, we have from Sammy some options of wor what works for others that I might haven't thought of in the past. Mm -hmm. um, and from Wendy, the power of observations can be deceiving, lol. <laughs> Great. Anything else? <laughs> All right. Okay, well, that gives us a few minutes for any last thoughts or any last questions before we say goodbye, and thank you to you all. Um, as well as time for you to download the documents we talked about today. So um, make sure that you download those because there is a bit of a, a time um, lag between when we'll be able to send those out to you. So if you want them sooner rather than later, download them today. I sound like an advertisement. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're going to have um, does Tina give you guys the, put up these uh, documents so you can download them and we can finish this meeting up in uh, with enough time. Thank you everybody for participating. Thank you Sammy for being the volunteer. Um, and for all of you who responded to any um, of these activities. We know it's a little different, and we appreciate you all kind of giving it a try and making this a more interactive, hopefully useful process for you all. Um, also, just to give you a heads up, um, we're interested in learning more about what um, aspects of these kinds of webinars are helpful for you all and which pieces are not helpful so that we can keep kind of being creative and really trying to push the envelope in terms of making these webinars something that people can, can use moving forward. So keep your eyes open and we will send a little evaluation to get some of that feedback. And again, thanks everyone for um, joining today's webinar. I do have the documents for today's, um, I guess for your toolbox, guys. So um, just feel free to download them to your flash drive or desktop. Awesome. Thank you so much, everybody, and Tina, for your help. You're welcome. Great presentation, guys.
Okay, guys, I will be ending the session. If you did not download any of the tools, um, just let us know, and we will send them to you guys. And thank you again. Have a great holiday, everybody, because we oh, won't yeah. see you all until afterwards. New Year. Yeah, good point. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>